a fucking Super Mario edited of just like, here we go! Yeah. <laughs> That's what and, it feels like. And with that, welcome to this week's episode <laughs> of Dead's Pixels. Uh, I'm your host, one of your hosts, Brad, joined by my co-host, Micah. Did you hear that? That's the sound of Phil's dick hitting the table. <laughs> and Carrie. What's up? So I, I like I said, I just have to come out and say it. A historic event that I thought, honestly, that we would never see, uh, grace the gaming industry today, and that, of course, is industry like major industry news dropping on a Tuesday, so that we could actually talk about it on the podcast in real time. <laughs> never thought I'd see it, and yet here we are. Uh, as we all woke up this morning, literally at like fucking it was straight like 9 away. A.m. Yeah, it was it was like right away. Uh, we're getting right into it. No preamble. Uh, Microsoft now owns Activision Blizzard. Uh, to the well, they're working on owning Activision Blizzard. The deal's not going to be finalized till next year, but they've de- they've declared their intent to purchase Activision Blizzard uh, to the tune of 60, seventy yeah. sixty eight point seven billion dollars. That's a lot of zeros. <laughs> I gotta say, last week when I when I asked you guys like, what could we possibly see that would be a bigger acquisition than, uh, than than Take Two buying Zynga just in terms of dollars, uh, this was not on my radar because I don't think this was on anybody's radar, and I think that's the thing that made it even more remarkable is that this literally came like a bolt out of the fucking green. That nobody expected. There were no leaks. There were no rumors. There weren't like it was literally like the the Wall Street Journal was reporting it this morning, and then like ten minutes later, Microsoft announced it, and yeah. and then <laughs> like we're off to the fucking races. And and that Twitter gaming Twitter just just exploded today. Like it was it was it was insane. Um. I, like I said, but before we even get into like the details and everything, like this is just such an incredible fucking announcement. Like I, I can't even, fa- like it, we people have talked about like, oh, what if EA got bought by Microsoft, and what if you know Ubisoft got by, but like you don't actually think it's gonna happen. Like you just fucking no. talk about that shit. <laughs> no, particularly when you look at the history of Activision, and Activision was really the first third party software development company. Like they, they, you know, fucking 40 years ago, they spun out of Atari because developers who were working directly for Atari didn't want to work for Atari anymore, but still wanted to make Atari video games. And that's why we got Activision. Um, I mean, it's, it's bonkers to, well, it's, (laughs) it's bonkers to think that Activision, especially given the nature of their founding to begin with, would now become a first party company again after all this time. (laughs) It is truly cyclical. Uh, Yeah, man, this is, um, this is, this is wild, right? Like, um, do you want to get into like speculations? Do you want to get into dissecting, um, uh, Phil Spencer's statements. Do you want to uh, just imagine what it would be like to have seventy billion with a B dollars? I mean, it's Microsoft. They that's a, the company is worth three trillion. I'm pretty sure that they have that much in liquid assets as it is. Um, we're going to get into all of it. Uh, let's start with what we know. Um, I think I think starting with the facts is probably uh, the best way to to go. Um, so like I said, we found out about the news this morning. Uh, here is all the things that come uh, part and parcel uh, with Activision Blizzard. So it, just in terms of game series, this isn't even studios, but you get the Call of Duty franchise, you get the Warcraft franchise, you get Candy Crush, Diablo, Overwatch, uh, Spyro, Hearthstone, Guitar Hero, which doesn't really matter anymore, uh, Crash Bandicoot, Starcraft. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah, it might, might later <laughs> on down the road. <laughs> Um, here's all the studios that you get. Uh, you get Activision Publishing, you get Blizzard, Beanox, Demonware, Digital Legends, High Moon, Infinity Ward, King, MLG, which I forgot that Activision owned, uh, mm-hmm. Radical Entertainment, Raven Software, Sledgehammer Game, Toys for Bob, Treyarch, and all of the other teams, uh, forthwith across all of these, uh, different studios. 
Uh, that is what Microsoft has acquired and purchased. Not to today. mention, yeah. Not to mention, like they already own three four three, the Coalition, Compulsion Games, Double Fine, the Initiative, In Exile Entertainment, Moang Studios, Ninja Theory, Obsidian, Playground Games, Rare, Turn Ten, and Undead Labs. And Bethesda, and and, Beth- and, and, and all and of Av- Bethesda, and Avalanche, and ID, and like, and, and all this other stuff. <laughs> I forgot um, about Bethesda. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, remember that happened last year or whatever when Microsoft bought Bethesda? And we were like, wow, that's a big deal. Like, this so far eclipses that in every conceivable way. It's boggling. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, yeah, this is a lot. <laughs> so, I mean, like, because, like, there's so much to take in, on, like, on the business end of things. Because, first of all, we ha- like we're acting under the assumption that this deal will go through sometime next year, and that everything's going to be fucking honky dory. Which, but... which it may not. More on that later. Like, like we'll talk about the the potential antitrust implications about this because it, <laughs> I don't know that it is a, a done deal. But we'll see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a lot. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, here's the thing, like, since, since Microsoft has purchased Bethesda, um, Bethesda hasn't really put out anything I would consider major, Mm. you know, Starfield comes out this year. I mean, Deathloop was a pretty big fucking deal. No, Deathloop was, but I, I guess what I mean to say is we haven't seen them do anything that I guess wasn't like already well into development Mm -hmm. you know they we we have yet to see sort of what what this partnership will do for bethesda's games if anything um i i guess it it really begs the question um and we might not see until later this year um you know is is starfield going to be game pass exclusive is the next elder scrolls game going to be game pass exclusive are we going to see call of duty become you know a console game pass exclusive franchise like what like what does this mean for all of these you know major third-party games um that have flourished on other systems um, like what, what does this mean for the future of all of these franchises? Are these all going to be <laughs> Microsoft exclusives or is Microsoft going to play nice with, uh, Sony and Nintendo? And I guess on the flip side of that, are Sony and Nintendo going to play nice with Microsoft? Well, so we, so Phil, Phil, Phil Spencer came out and addressed this kind of, um, basically he said that like, look, like we're not like, if you have, you know, communities that you you know, play with, with these franchises on, on other platforms. Like we're not looking to, you know, take you away from, from those communities. Essentially. I remember him saying something very similar, uh, when the Bethesda deal was reached. Uh, and then they basically said, look, we're going to honor all existing contracts, but going forward, any new games that come out are going to be exclusive to Xbox. So like while Deathloop obviously was a PlayStation exclusive and while, uh, Tokyo Ghostwire is going to be on PlayStation as well because they had mm-hmm. already announced that. Or sorry, Ghostwire Tokyo. I'm saying it backwards. Um, like Starfield is an Xbox exclusive. Elder Scrolls Six is going to be an Xbox exclusive. The next Fallout game is probably going to be an Xbox exclusive. Redfall is going to be an Xbox exclusive, at least on consoles. Um, so I would not be at all surprised if 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 we see the same the same tact here because like anything that's been announced to so, like what you know that's that's in well in development. At this point, so like Overwatch 2, uh, Diablo 4, the next Call of Duty game, you know, stuff like that. Like, I would imagine that that stuff is still going to come out on PlayStation, considering that the, the deal's not even going to be completed until next summer anyway. Right, um, at the earliest. Right, but like, going forward, is Call of Duty, you know, the the, the mainline Call of Duty games going to be Xbox console exclusive? Probably. Probably, <laughs> like, probably like, yeah. Like, is, is the next, uh, is the next you know, games in the Diablo franchise is going to be Xbox console exclusive. I would probably think so. Uh, are we going to finally see world of Warcraft on console? I don't think you've ever seen a better incentive for it to happen than now when mm-hmm. you have Microsoft There's that owns the company. So, someone, I, I don't know who it was. Someone brought up the idea of what if they just, um, 
what if a World of Warcraft subscription is simply part of Game Pass moving sure. forward? Because that's yeah, all they want. If you if you get if you get Game Pass, like you, if if you want to play World of Warcraft, you have to buy Game Pass. Like, yes, cool. Because because Microsoft, <laughs> I mean, I, like I'm sure Microsoft cares about that income, but they don't care about it as much as Activision does. And again, we are seeing a MMO that has a huge presence on consoles fucking flourish. And Microsoft, like, it's not going to happen overnight, but I'm sure they're looking at that and being like, there's oh, a I'm market. Sure they're, like, I'm there's sure a market out there. Final Fantasy 14 and being like, wow, this is an MMO that's hugely successful right now. And an enormous part of why it's successful is because because it is specifically optimized for consoles and yeah. for controller rather than mouse and keyboard. Um, yeah, boy, howdy. I mean, it's all, it, it feels as if, you know, one of the big criticisms towards Microsoft over the last couple of console generations is like, oh, they don't really have any first party titles besides like Halo and maybe Gears that would make people want to buy their console. And it's as if they went, Fuck it, we'll buy a few. And so they went out and they bought some of the biggest third party titles and have turned them into first party titles. Um, I, uh, it is a tactic that uh, I, me, myself personally, um, I can appreciate when faced with a problem of <laughs> not having console exclusives. Just, just, just buy them. Just buy them okay. all up. Love it. I mean, I can't, um, like I said, can't blame them. Yeah, man. No, I, really I don't. Can't. I don't blame him. I mean, I think this is gonna ripple in a big way. But uh, yeah, I guess. I guess no one can say Microsoft doesn't have any good first party titles anymore because now they have all of them. <laughs> You're just gonna I know buy everyone makes, else's. I, I want to know how this makes money, man. I want to know how this makes money. Like, uh, like everyone jokes about how like they don't know how Netflix makes money. Netflix doesn't make money. Right, like that's the thing. But I, I seventy billion dollars is a lot mm -hmm. of money to not eventually want to see some profit. Like I'm so curious to see the a dumbed down version of a of a flow chart in <laughs> which Microsoft is just like Game Pass step two profit. Well, but, here, but <laughs> Game here's Pass the thing. by Activision profit <laughs> part of part of this announcement was that microsoft also happened to announce just by mere coincidence uh that they have over 25 million game pass subscribers right now as part and parcel of this announcement and consider it's, consider it's about to be fucking 25 million and one because i keep looking at game pass for pc like uh... well but and that's the thing so consider this so they have 25 million subscribers for game pass right now as carrie alluded to we haven't even really seen the fruits of the Bethesda acquisition blossom yet. I mean, you can go on there and play old Bethesda games, you know, as part of Game Pass right now, but the new shit that everyone's, like, really fucking hype about hasn't even come out yet. Those yep. numbers are going to increase when Starfield mm -hmm. launches. Those numbers are going to increase when Fallout 5 launches and when Elder Scrolls 6 launches. Like, like those numbers are going to balloon. You don't think that those numbers are going to explode when the next Call of Duty comes out, like if you're if you're someone that like enjoys Call of Duty, but no, but you play it for three months and then you never touch it again, why the fuck would you ever spend seventy dollars to buy a new Call of Duty game when you can just get it as part of your Game Pass subscription? When the next Diablo comes out, when the, when Overwatch Two comes out, like are like are they're gonna get twenty five million more people to sign up for Game Pass within the next two years? Like they're yeah. gonna be over fifty million subscribers. In the next two years, and that's and that's all they want because like uh, Jeff Grubb from Gamesbeat, or for uh, mentioned on, you know, mentioned on Twitter, he's like you know, speculating like yeah, of course the next Call of Duty will be uh you know will be console exclusive because the lost sales that you would get on PlayStation, you just you kind of write that off as marketing for Game Pass essentially, and then mm -hmm. you're getting a bunch of those people to come over and give you fifteen dollars every single month. To, it you know, play. Is, isn't it just ten dollars? Well, it's, it's ten, $10 for, Game Pass, for but it's fifteen Game for Pass, Ultimate. fifteen for Ultimate, and Ultimate includes PC. Yes, and console, PC and console. Okay, so like if I just want PC, it's probably just ten. I don't know if that's an option. Okay. I don't know if only PC is an option. Right. Well, 
I'm going to find out. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but I, 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 I do ultimate just because not that I play PC games, but like it's another five bucks. Well, like, I, I don't do, have, I, play it, you know I don't I have an Xbox console and I don't want to own an Xbox console because why would <laughs> right. I own an Xbox console when I already have a PC that can do everything and more that an Xbox can. Um, right. So yeah, like I've been sort of like on the fence about Game Pass for PC for a minute, and now I'm like, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and 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 but and while you're there, like, yeah, you're like I'm getting it for this Bethesda stuff, but oh, this new, you know, Nobody Save the World comes out. I've heard good things about that. Let me check that out. Oh, I've heard, you know, I've heard about this game. I've heard about that game. Like you're gonna play stuff that's on there, and. That's all they care about. Like that's all yeah. they fucking want is to get is to get you to sign up for Game Pass and to give them, you know, a hundred and twenty to one hundred and eighty dollars a year. Like that that yeah. that's the end game because that's a constant stream of income. They like you want to know where the profit is. That's where the profit is. By the way, Call of Duty Activision also makes Call of Duty Warzone, a game that's making money hand over fist right now, a game that's making so much money that Activision really wasn't sweating, like, the sales for Call of Duty kind of trending downward for the first time in a long time. I don't think that Microsoft's going to go pulling Warzone off of PlayStation. Like, I'm pretty sure that they're going to leave Warzone right where it is and just let it just kind of make money passively and and just have money fucking coming in and and cashing out. So if you want to know where the profit is, you're just getting more and more people to sign up for Game Pass. And again, like, I'm one of those people, like, I'm one of those people that a couple months ago... Finally, it was like, man, like this value is too good to not, you know, get an Xbox and to go and to just fucking buy Game Pass. Like, I don't even need to own Xbox games. Like, I just need to get this subscription service and the games that I want to play will be on there. And if I'm not playing games on there, then I won't, you know, renew it for the next month. And I'll wait until something's on there that I'm actually going to play. And then I'll, you know, and then they can have my credit card and kind of go nuts. That's, that's what the end game is here. Like, that, it's, it's not too hard to figure out. Yes, you can get just PC Game Pass for ten bucks. So you might as well I'm just go ahead and do it now. Yeah, I mean, because <laughs> like I, I looked through the library and there's a bunch of stuff on there where I'm just like, yeah, I play that, I play that, I play that, I play that. Like, cool, ten bucks a month. Here you go. I think Phil. I came. I think I came here's on here. I think I came on here when when Game Pass was first uh, uh, floated about. And I was like, well, this is dumb. Who's going to do this? They ain't got no games. Uh, and look, I am, got games enough, now. I am man enough to say I was 100% wrong. <laughs> um, I think we I were don't, all, I mean, I think we all had that attitude and we were all wrong yeah, about man. it. But I also don't think we expected them to like go out and splash $80 billion to pick up, <laughs> no. you know, <laughs> right. to pick up these companies. Like, you're right. I'll never buy another Xbox game again. But I don't have to at this point i mean at this point given uh, that all of the major games are fucking day one on game pass like yeah and it's not just i can't think of a major (laughs) i can't think of a major game that's that's released for xbox that wasn't you know featured at their fucking e3 presentation or featured at the game awards or some shit like that where the thing at the end wasn't like day one game pass like that's what they're doing with everything right now with Game Pass. Also, you get like EA Play with it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was just looking at that. I'm like, so many things are like EA Play. I'm like, yo, cool. I can play fucking all this Star Wars shit that I yeah. want to play. I can play Mass Effect. Like, yeah. It's just fucking wild. You can play Mass Effect right now. Yeah. Like, it's, a, it's on yeah, Game I Pass can. right now. It's fucking it's crazy, man. It's this fucking, fucking goofy. crazy. There's no more, no more to see a thieves bullshit. Apparently, see a thieves is good now, though. So. Um, well, there you go. I play Sea of Thieves. I try it out. That's the yeah, thing. It's... That's how they get you. Is they're like, "Yo, you want to play this? Ten dollars a month. You can play this as much as you want." Now you try there were a lot of folks. There were a lot of folks that like kind of knee jerk reaction was like, "Oh my god, what's Sony going to do to respond to this?" I, I, I will also, I will point out. Uh, another thing that Phil Spencer said in in the you know doing interviews and stuff like that is he said according to this uh, they will now become the third biggest uh, in terms of revenue game publisher 
in the world uh, with this acquisition behind Tencent, who's number one, and Sony, who's number two. So so before everyone's like right at me like, oh my god, Sony's so fucked Sony now. Sony gotta do shit. Uh, they're still Sony's- cool. Yeah. They're still cool. As long, as long as they're still making games that are worth $70 to, to actually pay for and play, like Sony's still doing still doing yeah, like, <laughs> there's a whole there's a whole other world outside of this country that um that they really are are loyal to their to the Sony brand. Um look, I've never been well I I, I won't say never. I used to be a, a, a console wars person um back this is no joke. Back in the uh, Super Nintendo Genesis era, I used to be a, a console. Genesis does person. what Nintendo don't. What Nintendo don't, right? Um, because, and the only reason I was is because my parents didn't want to buy me a Genesis. They were like, "You already have a game system." <laughs> um, we need to bring back that kind of like outwardly antagonistic marketing. No, we strategy. don't. No, we, no, we really don't. No, we really don't. The, the, mar- the marketing's fun. The reaction, yes, the internet reaction wouldn't be. <laughs> the internet right. reaction would not be. Right. The, right. I mean, look at it. Look at it right now. Look at it right now with this. With this uh, announcement. <laughs> I don't know. So we'd be remiss uh, if we did not talk about uh, our good buddy uh, Bobby Kotick and his role in, mm. in this acquisition, because that was, of course, the first question out of people's mouths. So reportedly, actually not reportedly, Microsoft said this, uh, Bobby Kotick will remain in his CEO position uh, until uh, until the deal is done. Um, mm-hmm. Now, Microsoft has not said what Bobby Kotick will do, and Bobby Kotick has not technically said what he'll do. Uh, but in an interview, uh, I believe with, with GamesBeat, uh, Bobby yes, Kotick said indeed. that once once his once the acquisition is complete, um, he will be available as needed. Uh, were his words, so that would yeah, suggest so that he, that's, yeah. he's he's gonna go. Yeah. Um, I Jason Trier had a really good breakdown of that interview, um, where where basically he outlined the fact that um, Bobby Kotick has always cared deeply about appearances. Uh, imagine it was tremendously important to him that he appeared to be leaving on his own terms. He wasn't pushed out. Activision's issues had nothing to do with the sale. He just felt like it was time. His response in the interview is very telling. He does not want history to show that he sold the company he spent 30 years running because of a sexual misconduct scandal. No, it wasn't because of that. It was because his employees couldn't ship Overwatch 2 or Diablo 4 on time. It was because Call of Duty had an off year. Of course, incidentally, Overwatch and Diablo were both delayed in part because of all of the attrition at Blizzard. And gee, I wonder who's responsible for all of that attrition. Um, So, yeah. Yeah. I wish uh, Bobby Kotick a very sincere eat shit. Um, And uh, I don't think history is going to be particularly kind to him. And I think even more about how awful of a CEO and how awful of a person is probably going to come out in the following months. Because, you know, all of this legal stuff with Activision Blizzard is like still ongoing. Like that's not going away. It's not going away because Microsoft bought them. Yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk about what Microsoft also has acquired, uh, along with uh, along with the games and the studios uh, with this acquisition. Um, the issue is so like everyone's like pressing Phil Spencer and other people for comment on Bobby Kotick. Here's the thing: they literally legally cannot say anything about him right now because he no. is the CEO of a company that they are trying to acquire. Um, it w- if you say something about him, you can be accused of like trying to like of like price fixing or price influencing and stuff like yeah. that. It is, it is literally against the law for them to say anything uh, about him. So you're not going to get any comment on them um, from them. Um, I'm, I told people on Twitter, I'm going to tell everyone listening now, steal yourself for the end of this Bobby Kotick cycle, because he is going to leave and he is going to have the most luxurious, uh, oh, yeah. the most like like the the biggest oh, yeah. and prettiest golden parachute that you have ever seen. Uh, he's going to walk away with in the hundreds of millions of dollars uh, from this deal, and if that, I mean that's the price of making it so that we don't have to deal with him anymore. Um, the Activision Studios will be better off without him, and hopefully much better uh, working for Microsoft, which has a 
uh, generally much more favorable company culture, uh, reportedly. Um, but he is not going to suffer. He's not going to get any sort of comeuppance. Uh, he's going to walk away and not have to work another day for the rest of his life and be rich and his kids will be rich and his grandkids will be rich and his grandkids, grandkids will be rich because that's a gobsmacking amount of money. Yeah. And he's going to make that because that's what happens when you're a CEO of a publicly traded company who's value, who's valued at $50 billion and you sell it for 70 and all the shareholders get paid out. They want to make sure to take care of the guy uh, that got them the sweet chunk of change uh, that every stockholder, every shareholder in Activision Blizzard is going to get to walk away with uh, as a result of this acquisition. So, preparing yourself for that now. Uh, it's not going to be a happy day, <laughs> but it is happening. And understand that that's the case. Yeah. Um, general sentiments that apparently have been floating around from Activision Blizzard employees are basically like general optimism about changes coming to management given that um most of you know there hasn't really been so much as rumors of terrible company culture at most of the xbox owned studios so hopefully there will be a major culture change um but everyone's basically pissed off because bobby's going to get a big time payday and a very soft exit <laughs> <So>. <laughs> uh so we talked about the fact that this still has to uh, be finalized, and part of the finalization it has to be signed off on uh, in the U.S. by the Federal Trade Commission. And because this just got announced today, um, we don't, you know, we're not going to see what happens here. And typically the FTC is pretty lenient historically on entertainment acquisitions. Like, they, they, they care about, you know, they care about, like, telecommunications and, like, utility acquisitions and stuff like that. They don't really care about shit like this. Yeah, they don't really care about entertainment. However, uh, there's been a lot of talk and a lot of consternation, especially in the U.S. Congress, uh, about the influence of uh, big tech and a lot of these tech companies that are growing huge and out of control. Uh, so it would not shock me at all if they wanted to take a little bit of a harsh eye at this, especially if... Uh, like Sony, for example, was like, man, like this seems kind of fucked up, like to be able to uh, <laughs> to be able to acquire this company and just basically price us out of uh, you know this game that we've had a major partnership that sold yep. you know millions of units on our consoles over the years. Like, I don't know if that's really fair. Mm -hmm. And so, I wouldn't be surprised if the FTC at least takes a very stringent view uh, of this situation. Now, whether it blocks the sale or not, I don't know. Uh, reportedly, if the sale does get canceled or blocked in some way, shape, or form, uh, Microsoft will still have to pay Activision Blizzard $3 billion, which is not an insignificant amount of money. I mean, it is for Microsoft, no. but... I mean... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but in, in general, it's not it's not an insignificant amount of money. I um, can do a lot with $3 billion. I, You can. I, I would disappear. <laughs> you, 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 give me, you give me $1 billion and you will never hear from me again. <laughs> Uh, but as Carrie also mentioned, those lawsuits and the investigations uh, by California Department of Fair Employment and Housing uh, aren't going away, nor is the uh, potential unionization efforts of some studios within Activision Blizzard as no. well. No, that's not going away anytime <laughs> soon. Um, I mean, the, the efforts to unionize, of course, um, have uh, so far spread well beyond uh activation blizzard um because you know being a game dev uh, fucking sucks apparently uh with how many how many studios are uh really favorable of bullshit crunch and overlook bad working conditions and are cool with paying women less and that sort of shit um yeah i i absolutely still think that um the efforts to unionize particularly within activision will be ongoing and if anything i wouldn't be surprised if this incentivized them further because if now they're like oh now we're now we'll be able to talk to a board of directors that might be more receptive to making shit better for us um because uh lord knows 
Bobby and the uh, Activision board had no interest in allowing a union to happen at their company. So, yeah, look at all these nice smiling faces at the end of uh, Phil's announcement. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're like, "Hey, we got somebody for everybody here." So that's right. So Phil, uh, Phil Spencer, like, look at all this diversity. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what that is. <laughs> <laughs> In high-ranking positions of power. Like, this is what you're walking into, guys. Like, not this male-dominated culture. So, uh, it, like I said, there's still a lot to shake out from this. Um, uh, but now it's time for rampant speculation. Like, what what do you guys think that we'll possibly <laughs> see uh, in the future from this seismic announcement in the games industry? Oh, man. Um... Do, do we from... get an annual Call of Duty game still? Honestly, um, no. I don't yeah, think we do I was anymore. About to say, I, yeah, I think I was about to say. folks were really quick to point out that this might actually allow Activision to be a better game dev because Bobby Kotick was so focused on having all of these annualized big series, um, regardless of how quality the games were. Um that you know shit got ran into the ground so under microsoft and under xbox they might actually be allowed to you know have the time to let shit breathe and to make good games and not have crunch and stuff like that um i don't i don't think call of duty will remain annual it might go biannual um but yeah it it wouldn't surprise me to see other stuff from the Activision back catalog sort of brought back forward because, you know, Activision did this thing where something became popular and then they would run it straight into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at you, Guitar Hero. Um, so, you know, I I think some of this stuff from, from Activision's back catalog could be revived and brought back in a way that's maybe more sustainable than putting out the same bullshit year after year for the sake of turning a quick buck. Um, yeah, a, uh, a restructuring of release schedules, um, is big. Um, you can, because you own all this IP, you can like synergize with different games. You know what I mean? Um, everyone loves a crossover. <laughs> everyone's a sucker for it um jesus like you said world of warcraft on console um i'm very curious to see how if these extra resources will be put towards their cloud gaming to make it something i i, I won't say more viable i haven't used it i don't know the the viability of it. What was it like when you when you tried it? It still feels. It, it's not seamless. Like like it's pretty cool just being like you know hey start a game and you're up and running in you know 15 seconds like that part's neat. But there's still there's still la latency issues like that's not it, but it's and it, it doesn't hurt every game but it hurts a lot of games to have those kind of latency issues. Um, so I mean that's still a problem that you have to deal with. I uh, I foresee a game price increase. <laughs> um, there's a there's a lot, man. There's a lot that that uh, that can happen here. Do you and, see a game pass price increase? Yeah, that's what I meant. That's what I, I mean. Game, I think game I game think pass game pass increase. not a game price, a game pass increase. I think Game Pass was probably bound to slowly but steadily increase over the next couple of years anyway. And maybe this just accelerates that a little bit. Yeah. I mean, like I said, we, yeah. I mean, there's tolerance of that anyway, because like Netflix is raising their rates. Basically Netflix and Disney Plus point. and Hulu and every other yeah. fucking streaming yeah, subscription literally everybody. bullshit. Everybody literally does everybody. it. Yeah. Guess what? We'll sign up at $9 bucks. in two years from now and we paying 15 Fucking whatever. You got me in. <laughs> right. You got 20, my money. And, 20 and 15 20 and $15. To, to or twenty or fifteen dollars to play literally all the games. Every game to play all of the games. <laughs> all right, fucking whatever. I, mean, I get it. Uh, you know, 
Um, what else am I going to do? Pay $70 to fucking have it on a disc for a console that I don't <laughs> own? You got me. You got me there, yeah. Microsoft. So, uh, if this is wild, man. Is, is, the, is this truly uh, the fucking golden age of PC gaming now? Because, like, not, not only, like, do you have the normal shit that comes out on PC in general... But, like, you got Game Pass on PC. Sony's putting their stuff out on PC. Like, if you own a PC, like, you're basically playing all the games. Like, like everything's coming at you. Yeah, back right to now. this Master Race bullshit. <laughs> 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 I, I'm, I'm curious to see, like, the Call of Duty Studios especially, like, what else potentially they could do. Like, I'm pretty sure, like, Treyarch or Infinity Ward is going to just be stuck in Call of Duty Purgatory forever. Um... But it'd be cool to see some other output. Uh, it'd be nice to see, uh, like, Toys for Bob not working on just Skylanders and not working on just, like, Warzone and stuff like that. Like, it'd be cool to see uh, Vicarious oh, Visions get to do stuff that's not just support Blizzard, you know, titles and stuff like that. Like, it's going to be pretty pretty nifty. Um, yeah, like, Toys for Bob really did, like fucking crash bandicoot insane trilogy spyro reignited trilogy crash 4 and then activision was like fuck you you're developing call of duty now yeah let them develop <laughs> spyro and crash please seriously i mean that's that's what you gotta do um that's i can't wait to want. see can't wait to see blizzard's catalog show up on uh game pass um like i can I said, wait I'm sure I, you I still got to see I still got to see a culture change at Blizzard cuz all that shit all of that shit that incredibly toxic shit that had had been going on at Blizzard even before Activision fucking bought them out. So like I need to see I need to see not just Bobby gone. I need to see rounds of firings happen. I mean we're Activision I mean we're, we've Blizzard. seen a lot of that. Like with Blizzard, especially, there's been a lot of folks in high ranking positions that have been going over the past several months. So, like, I'm sure, I'm sure the cleanout's not done, uh, but they've definitely been making strides in the right direction. Plus, you don't have to feel like a fucking asshole for giving them money now, like because you don't have to give them money anymore. <laughs> it's going to Microsoft now. Um, I'll give I'll give Phil a, a cool nine ninety nine. There you go. Every month. But uh, I think that. Uh, <laughs> Do you think that any of these subsidiaries kind of get lost in the shuffle? Because I remember when I remember when Rare came out or mm -hmm. when I started being aware of games developed by Rare. And they had a bunch of titles, man, and they got bought and I don't really see much of their stuff. Now, granted, they're working on like they're on they're doing like Sea of Thieves, which apparently is a good game now, according to Gary. Um, but I remember that rare logo like meant something. And well, I think I part really... of the problem is that, you know, back in what I would consider to be the glory days of rare rare of the mid to late nineties, um, so much of what they were doing was doing licensed first party stuff for nintendo um you know donkey kong country uh golden eye of course is golden licensed mm -hmm. um the the kind of stuff that like their own ip like banjo kazooie um and perfect dark and whatnot felt like they tried to revive a little bit on xbox but like nuts and bolts was a fun game but it wasn't a fun banjo kazooie game right. um well it, it also didn't help that they the got point. they got shoved into they, they they were they like rare became the connect developer like, yeah that's the also true is out, they got so. sort of they got sort of pigeonholed into doing that and it's only within the last couple of years with Sea of Thieves and I guess they're working on Everwild mm -hmm. um, that it seems like they're allowed to sort of be their own company again. But I mean, they were so busy doing stuff for Nintendo from, you know, the the 90s through the early 2000s. And um, then it's like as soon as they got bought by Microsoft, Microsoft wasn't really sure <laughs> what to do with them. Um well, and, so they and made that, fucking Diva Pinata or some shit. Right. 
Um. <laughs> to that point, like I think Microsoft has seen, and Phil Spencer, like the benefit of Phil Spencer kind of being in charge of their games division right now is that he's been there for you know twenty plus years. Like he's yeah. he's seen a wide. He he's basically been there for the entire existence of the Xbox, for 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 better or worse. Mm-hmm. And so he's seen, you know, what being heavy handed on studios and what kind of pigeonholing studios into certain projects that aren't necessarily their forte. Um, where that's gotten the company over the years. <coughs> and so I think that they're going to take, you know, with your Bethesda's, with your Activision's, with your Blizzard's, companies like that, they're going to take a bit of a, not a hands-off approach, but they're going to be like, you know, what do you guys want to do? Like, let's see stuff. Like, I don't think they're going to force projects on them. I think they're going to look to see, you know, hey, what do you guys want to do? Does this work for what we want to, you know, what we want to be on Xbox? Like, can we, you know, is this viable for us as a, as a game product and kind of shepherd them that way instead of being like, man, we really need, you know, we need a, uh, you know, like a, you know, I, I can't even think like, like a third person action adventure game set in this setting. Uh, get to it, Blizzard. Like you, you guys need to make this happen. Like, I don't, I don't foresee that being the case. Um, you know, they bought these companies because these companies are known and have the track record of making excellent games. So I think you just kind of let them do what they do and reap the benefits. Hmm. Well, I hope so. This is a this is a very exciting time. I don't want. Um, I'm not saying this is going to happen, but I don't want like a bunch of samey games, mm-hmm. right? I don't want Call of Duty every year. I, I really don't. Um, I don't. Um, I, as much as I don't really jive with some of Arcane's games, I appreciate them. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Um, no, they I would feel like they're trying that. things. And like, I just want them to try things. I, I, I don't want this, this to be like, hey, let's just get, let's just, let's just guarantee, let's just make guarantee bangers, you know, and, and lose creativity. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying it will. I'm just saying I no, like don't have. Dishonored is a very specific flavor of game. Deathloop is a very specific flavor of game. And they're not for everyone, but I would rather see studios do more stuff like that than do what Activision has done, which is like fucking shit out the same game year after year yeah. after year after year. Yeah. Put a new fucking coat of paint on it and be like, many, here's your new Call of Duty. Theaters, how many fucking theaters were in World War II, for God's sake? <laughs> there were literally two. <laughs> <laughs> you just, you just dined out on them for you know for all you, you poured them in any in every way that's possible. why you know every it's like we've seen this fucking call of duty cycle where it's like cool so we did we did modern warfare we did black ops and now we're gonna trot back out world war ii again because people people want to play world war ii games again then they do world war ii for a couple of years and then it's like oh people are sick of world war ii here comes Afghanistan. Like, <laughs> let's jump into let's jump into the future and get Jon Snow. Right, <laughs> or we're going fifty years in the future and just making shit up. Uh, I I would guarantee that you're not going to see another like Call of Duty branded future game at this point because that was oh, literally no, them never. being like ah people like that Halo let's see and the Destiny right. let's see if we can make the Halo the Destiny and there's like no we don't we don't care but you this. know what I I appreciate the try I appreciate the try. <laughs> uh, we go uh, a brief detour to the post office. Uh, Phil oh. Wander asked, "With the shocking acquisition of Microsoft buying Activision Blizzard, and the immortal words of Bill Goldberg, uh, who's next for Microsoft? <laughs> Are they going to open their wallets to get any more big time, big time uh, publishers and or studios in the I near future?" Wouldn't. I speaking as a, speaking as a, a, a not businessman, I wouldn't, but. Um, you know, you don't you don't want to keep throwing good money after we don't know if it's going to be bad yet. Yeah. And I, 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 I feel like I feel like they got enough right now. <laughs> I feel like they might be OK right now. Um, but again, I don't I just don't want um, I, I, I don't know. I don't want to live like as much as people are like. There should just be one console and you could just play all the game. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't want that necessarily like that. Cause I don't know. I don't know why people want that, man. I really don't. But Uh, um, that's how we got fucking, uh, the ET Atari video game. (laughs) 
Yeah, man. Like because you consolidate so much, and then at that point, you know, you you lose out on quality control because when you only have one console, and then that's the only thing people can buy for, and you can just put whatever the fuck you want out on it, and so then you end up with a glut of bullshit and a uh, total industry collapse. It's also <laughs> it's also not the time to to do it if you're a buyer in the market. So like, yeah. if you're EA. And like you see that Microsoft just paid like forty percent over market cap for <laughs> for for Activision. Mm -hmm. Like of course, like if Microsoft's going to come to you and be like, "Hey, like we'll pay, you know, we'll pay forty percent over cap to buy you guys as well," you're gonna be like, "Fucking great." But I also, it's interesting because like between not only the scandals going on at Activision Blizzard, but also like Bobby Kotick even talked about like you know Blizzard's taking forever to ship games, uh, Call of Duty, even though it's the you know the most popular game. The, the, sorry, the two most popular games in 2021 in terms of sales uh, mm -hmm. were Call of Duty games. Like, even though that's happening, it's still trending downward. And when that's really all you have, and you start to see, like, a blip in the radar and that kind of stuff, that's a good incentive to sell if you have someone that's willing to buy. But, like, EA is still, you know... EA has no incentive to sell. Yeah, Ubisoft they're still making really FIFA money like crazy every year. Uh, There's really Ubisoft, no one else... Yeah, Ubisoft's not really in, in a position where they need to do that. I could see them maybe picking up, like, a smaller studio and a smaller publisher here and there. But as far as, like, these Megaton acquisitions... Sure. And the thing is, yeah. like, that's ultimately, much as, like, industry consolidation, you know, for a lot of small, like, and I'm talking small indie studios like being bought out by someone like microsoft is like exactly what they want because that means they can uh keep the lights on because <laughs> a lot of these studios don't run on particularly big budgets and to have financial backing from a studio like microsoft or sony or something like that um that's huge so yeah i mean i i don't think you're going to see another major third-party studio acquisition by the likes of nintendo sony or microsoft um anytime soon um of course I, now that i've said that something will happen in two weeks and i will have to eat these words <laughs> microsoft buys take two for 150 it's gonna million be like, dollars oh, fucking <laughs> nintendo finally just buys sega and i'm like all right like yeah yeah i don't know um this this sort of stuff tends to be um generally few and far between of course we just had that zynga shit happen last week so who knows i'm talking out of my ass i don't know what i'm talking about i'm not a games expert i'm a fucking nerd on the internet <laughs> <laughs> so that was uh that was 47 minutes on activision blizzard <laughs> and microsoft uh micah can you sell people all the things uh real quick <laughs> apparently not um <laughs> Hey, do you have $70 billion that you would like to spend? Um, then maybe you should sign up for premium content. Um, <laughs> fuck that Amazon thing. Uh, <laughs> give us your $70 billion, goddammit. Um, look, go to nicepixels.com slash fans um, and uh, hop into our Discord where you can talk about uh, what it would be like to have $70 billion to, to throw around. Um, go to youtube.com slash pixels and subscribe. Uh, go to uh, subscribe to all of our podcasts. Uh, we do uh, quite a few of them. Um, <laughs> uh, you know what? I'll save that. Um, uh, including uh, Jay, Jay sent me a message right before we started uh, about an idea that he had uh, um, to oh, try and appeal no. to more people. Uh, oh, and, no. and, and, and good luck with all that. Um, <laughs> Subscribe to the Nerdpocalypse, Black on Black Cinema, Coming Distractions, and the weekly preview episode of the Look Forward Political Podcast. And if that's not enough, if you have $70 billion and $50, <laughs> go to <laughs> densepixels.com slash premium. Use that extra $50 to access all of the premium content that we have, including the airing of grievances, No Time to Bleed, The Men with the Golden Tongues, Upstage Conversations, and the full episode of the Look Forward Political Podcast, which I'm currently in the middle of right now. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that's uh, densepixels.com slash premium. Uh, so the thing that we were planning on talking about this week that I thought was going to be like the main crux of the show uh, is finally getting around to our 2021 Game of the Year 
discussion. Now, typically in the past, we've all come to the podcast with our own personal lists, uh, our top fives, and we've collectively decided on a Dense Pixels game of the year. Um, mm -hmm. I think that that is going to be an impossible task this year because <laughs> Micah and I often like kind of line up uh, as far as like what games were the most impactful for us over the year. Carrie's always the wild card, of course. Terrence, you never even know what you're going to get uh, with him. Uh, this year, or this past year, I should say, was such a diverse slate of games that came out. Um, I, I obviously like Carrie's top five list is going to be very different from Micah and my own. <laughs> yeah, I think that mine and Micah's top five list uh, is not going to have a lot of crossover. I think that maybe two games will cross over uh, from our top five list. Uh, yeah, and one of them's kind of a cheat. So one of them is one, oh, one of them is a huge <laughs> cheat, uh, and I will I will I will let you guys soon know where I have this this cheat uh, ranked on my list. Uh, let's just kick it around the table real quick. Carrie, your number five game of twenty twenty one. Monster Hunter Stories Two: Wings of Ruin. Um, the game's really fun. Uh, it's a different take on the Monster Hunter world and on the lore. Um, you get to roll around in the world on the back of your little monsties. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It was a lot of fun. It plays really well. It's basically the best available Pokemon title on the Switch right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Micah, your number five game of So the way, the way I generally do my game of the year is usually the game I spent the most time with. Because mm -hmm. if I spend the most time with a game, then I uh, probably really, really enjoyed myself. Uh, or a game that I, you know, just couldn't wait to play. Uh, just to give you context of what my top five is. And, you know, you all know me. I'm the, like, uber mainstream, non-artistic, <laughs> right? Like, I'm, 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 I am, I am who you think I am, right? <laughs> So, my number five game of the year is Metroid Dread. Oh, nice. Um, nice. Is, is, Good for is, you. Is, I couldn't I, I I couldn't believe how much I actually really enjoyed going back to a Metroid style game. Uh, and it just happened to be Metroid. They are Metroid style games. They are not Metroidvania games because Metroid came out before Castlevania. That's I don't fair. care if I don't care if Symphony of the Night uh, made it popular or whatever. Metroid came out first. They're Metroid style games. And Metroid Dread is amazing. Metroid Dread is really fun. Uh, a little, little difficult for your old man here, but, <laughs> but, uh, but I do. I, I did have uh, a very good time, and it, it just, it, it harkened back to, harkened back to my youth, when, uh, when I had patience and dexterity. <laughs> <laughs> so my, my five games, all five games. Um, weren't necessarily the games that I spent the most time with this year. Um, cause at, like Micah, I tend to also kind of look at that metric as well, but all five of these games were the five games that I literally could not take out of my hand. Uh, once I got them and had to play them through, uh, to completion or some semblance of it. Uh, my number five, uh, is also Metroid dread. <laughs> uh, for all the reasons that Micah said, uh, it was just a terrific game. Um, like I said, I, I, I forgot how much I missed a uh, classic Metroid experience and it, it really is, uh, speaks highly of that game that even in this era where that genre of game has arguably like evolved past what Metroid does, like Metroid reminded you like, nah, man, like fucking tight gameplay, satisfying puzzles to discover and, and the maze and, and cool weapon upgrades, like that's all you need, baby. Like we've always been here. We're always we're always gonna be the best. So I love Metroid Dread, uh, and that's why it's my number five. Carrie, you're number four. Shin Megami Tensei five. Um, oh, that's yeah. interesting. I I like Shin Megami Tensei five quite a bit. I just played some other games more and liked them a little bit better. Um, yeah, I mean SMT five. Uh, waited a long time for this game to come out. Um, it has so many quality of life upgrades over earlier mainline Shin Megami Tensei games. Um, it feels like an appropriate place to jump into mainline Shin Mega Ten games if you have otherwise only only ever played uh, like 
persona. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it it plays well. It's a fun open world, but still turn based RPG on the Switch. Um, I don't know. Fucking, I want. I like to play a game where you attack and dethrone God and. Shin Megami Tensei delivers. <laughs> uh, Mikey, you're number four. Uh, my number four, look, um, I, I I was not a fan. Uh, I'm, I am not uh, a fan of the comic, uh, not for any particular reason. I just haven't read it. But I am a really big fan of those Guardians of the Galaxy movies. Um, and, and this game, Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, is my number four game. It is the big budget, you know, blockbuster Marvel title that came out. And um, good stories are, there are two different types of, of stories that can, that can be told, right? Christopher Nolan style stories where the story and what's going on is the thing that hooks you or James Gunn style stories where it's all about character and the story just has to kind of make a little bit of sense, but it's all about characters and how they interact with people. And do you like these people? And do you want to spend time with these people? I want to spend time with each and every person in that Guardians of the Galaxy game. Um, the characterizations uh, are, are amazing. Uh, it's a little tropey and it's found family type, you know, dynamic, but you know, it works. Uh, the music is great, not just because you get to hear a bunch of 80s tunes or whatever, but the way it's implemented in the gameplay, in the in the quieter scenes where where uh, exposition is happening and you hear this faint like song in the background that has to has something to do with what is happening or what will happen. Um, the gameplay is fun. The game is a little long for there's not enough variety in the gameplay, um, okay. especially during like later, the later you get into the game. But yeah, man, look, super polished. Uh, absolutely had a blast with it. Um, I, I own that game. Uh, I still haven't played it. It's next on my list. I think you would have a really good time with it. I think you would have an excellent time with it. You'll be like, you'll you'll just you'll just have fun. It's just fun. Honestly, I have a lot of PTO to use this year, and I might just give myself like a fucking long weekend sometime in the next month or so to just sit and play fucking video games. There you go. Just bust that out in a weekend. Uh, my number four was late to the dance for me, uh, but it squeezed in about uh, 30 hours of time uh, over the last month of the year for me, and that was Forza Horizon 5, uh, a game that I kind of bagged on a little bit on the show. Um, but it was just, it's massively fun to play. Like, it, it's a great fucking ultimate podcast game, ultimate just, like, time-killing, like, listening to something else while you're driving around kind of game. Um, again, a great open-world experience. That's the thing. I, I, I said that it was not a great racing game, and it's not, but it is a great open-world game with lots of things to find, discover, a variety of different events. Um, just fun. Just a fun game. And like I said, I played the shit out of it. I really wasn't expecting to to get as uh, into that as I did uh, this year. So yeah, Forza Horizon 5 is my number four game this year. Number three for me, um, I guess it sort of cheating because the game came out in the back half of 2020 but i don't give a shit so my 2021 list anyway because that's when i played it paradise killer <laughs> um, i loved paradise killer i was like i played it and i was so fucking mad that people hadn't like really told me to play the game up until that point like i had heard of like oh it's kind of cool it has this like vaporwave aesthetic which i'm very into and um like the soundtrack's cool but no one no one ever like came to me and was like you need to play this game and then i played it and i was like yo it's so good like it's it's such it's such a unique experience it's so sure of like what it is and what it wants to be and the vibe that it's going for and holy shit the soundtrack is so good like, if nothing else, just, like, go and listen to the soundtrack. Because Epoch, um, Berry Topping, this fucking, 
Scottish motherfucker. He's so good. Like, he just nailed this delicious vibe of a soundtrack. Um, but the game itself is really good. It's this fun mystery. There's a lot of cool characters. It's just really over the top in what it is. And I've never seen anything else like it and may never will again. Uh, uh, Paradise Killer is really good. I, I, <laughs> I like it's it's a world that I just like I want to go back to over and over again. Micah, you're number three. <laughs> so it was very difficult for me to arrange these next three games. Um, but I think I, I think I have the order in which I, uh, I want them. Uh, like I've never been, uh, I've always appreciated this series, but I've never been like a huge fan of it. We're lighting but, up again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but Ratchet and Clank was, uh-huh. Ratchet and Clank was really, really fun, man. Like uh-huh. it is, it's, a. Uh, it's, you, you just said, you just described a game as knowing exactly what it is. That's exactly what this is. This yeah. is a third person, uh, uh, action adventure shooter. It is, it is. Uh, uh, it is what it is, but what it does, it does very, very well. Um, the, it, it's beautiful and it shows it. It's the first glimpse of what these new consoles can do. And, um, it gets me super excited for, uh, I, I'm excited for any insomniac game, but this gets me jazz for, anything that the all the for spider-man for wolverine for anything that they have coming out this is this is a nice appetizer to what will be uh a couple of main courses coming down the line from them so yeah ratchet and clank rift apart is uh is just a really fun game yeah rift apart also my number three um Great story, great cast of characters. Like Micah said, it Insomniac knows how to make these games at this point. Um, not a revolutionary game in terms of like what it does for the Ratchet and Clank uh, ethos, but like those games are all about getting some pretty good, like cleverly written dialogue uh, with a lot of fucking fun as shit weapons in a lot of interesting platforming areas and with beautiful visuals in this case and. Lots of fun, like, environmental puzzles and stuff like that. I I enjoyed this game thoroughly. Again, I beat it in, 100%ed it in, like, a week, basically. Like, that's that's how much fun I enjoyed uh, having with Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Uh, Number three, there were were two games that I liked better than that this year, uh, but I really enjoyed Rift Apart quite a bit. All right, so, like, my, my number two and my number one are, like, Really, really, really I think, tight. I think I know the order. I think I know the and, order for that. And them. the reason why I'm putting this at number two instead of number one, despite the fact that I put, um, let's see, since I started playing it in June, um, I have 488 hours in it. Um, <laughs> I am putting Final Fantasy fourteen and the Endwalker expansion specifically at my number two this year and the reason why it's at number two instead of at number one is because i had to sit and think of if i had the opportunity to start this over again from the very beginning would i do that and the answer is no Um, (laughs) i am i'm glad that i'm at where i'm at and i'm glad that i got to experience this story but would i like go and fucking start all over again and grind all the way back here again no i would not do that that was a lot of work and i'm not going to do it again um but yeah man fucking i i have a lot of complex feelings about final fantasy as a franchise um i i like a lot of final fantasy stuff and um i mean you know sort of grew up playing final fantasy i've played a lot of the older ones um four and six remain sort of my favorites as far as the single player games uh, are concerned. Um, And uh, FF14 and especially the stuff in Endwalker, like really, really pushed all the right buttons for me sort of at the right time. And it's a a game that I'm glad sort of came into my life when it did. Um, It has allowed me to like weirdly reconnect (laughs) with some friends in some interesting ways. Um, It's a game that I enjoy playing with my friends. Um, I also went from like, who the fuck is Emmett Selk to like, 
literally having a fucking <laughs> Emmett Selk <laughs> shrine in my goddamn office. I'm a mess about that, man. Um, yeah, look, I I got I got real fucking in my feelings about the story at the end of Ann Walker. I did not think that this was a story that was going to like make me produce physical tears like <laughs> <laughs> i cried way more playing final fantasy 14 than i expected i was going to when i first started i'll tell you that much um but yeah look it's a great game it's a great community um it's a ton of fun i i've never been much of an mmo person um much less really like an online multiplayer kind of person at all but um yep ff14 real good um and endwalker was a strong payoff to this story arc so uh you know these next two games are the games that i put the most time in and um so it was very difficult because i like them for very different reasons um but I think my number two is where it is because a major component of it, I don't really care for, but the other component I can't put down. And that is Halo Infinite. Wow. I don't care for the single player mode. And I thought I would, right? It's an open world game, it's Halo right? It's, it's science fiction, it's military, it's, it's, it's the bullshit that I'm into. But that story is so fucking dumb and convoluted. And, and I just, and I, I just don't care. Then I jumped into multiplayer. Look, I'm not a multiplayer guy, right? I don't play multiplayer. I don't play shooters for their multiplayer, right? Like I'm that weird guy. Nah, Halo Infinite is amazing at multiplayer it feels great everything feels right even some of the weapons that aren't like like the mangler which is kind of a little op like the only reason it's op is if you bust a shot off and melee somebody you can kill them right that's overpowered but you got to get close to them right like it's like it's so much fun and i can't believe like it's it's uh, ostensibly free mm. and it just it it has provided me hours and hours and hours one every day at 1 p.m i'm hopping on there to start playing again because that's when like your your dailies reset and you can earn <laughs> but like i'm i'm having a blast playing halo infinite and i couldn't believe that this would be it so yeah number number two is halo infinite I always have at least one of these like fucking like a like in, indie hipster picks on my on my list this year. Um, mm. I knew I was gonna like this game when it came out. I didn't realize I was gonna like play it for forty hours, kind of like it. Uh, and that was uh, Griftlands, which came out on the Switch. Um, mm. A really interesting uh, addition to the deck builder genre of games uh, because they added like. A, a choose your own adventure kind of story through it with characters that are actually really funny and, and lots of fucking outlandish, hilarious outcomes. And it, they have three different characters, which have very different paths as you go through the game. Um, of course, like as you play and, and use the characters, you unlock new cards that makes your subsequent runs um, that much better. Uh, really delightful fucking game. Uh, it, I played it a ton uh, when it came out in the summer and uh, I'll, I'm sure I will be back to revisit it at some point because it's a solid addition to that genre. Um, so yeah, Griftlands is my number two game of this year. Well, if it wasn't Final Fantasy, you knew it was going to be this. <laughs> my game of the year for 2021 is Monster Hunter Rise. I put 150 hours into it on Switch. Um, and I've been playing on PC, so it's gonna be my game of the year again for this year. Uh, the fact that, like, look, that game is so much fun to play. Um, the the movement system that they introduced with the wire bug mechanic is like it's it's 
fun and it's it feels very innovative for the series um yeah i don't know man fucking monster hunter good all i want to do is hunt monsters like the gameplay loop in monster hunter is more satisfying than any other game i have ever played and rise is really good and sunbreak comes out this year so i will have even more content to play um because i know that content dropped off on the switch version basically because they were working on the PC version and working on the Sunbreak expansion. So presumably, once Sunbreak comes out, there will be way more to do in the game, uh, which means I've got plenty of time to get my Hunter rank back up to where it was on the Switch version where Sunbreak comes out this summer. <laughs> uh, yeah, dude, fucking... I, I... Monster Hunter, good. So I'm going to... I mean... uh... I'm gonna stop Micah before before Micah starts talking because I, I so I just want to. 2021 was a good year for games. Like I said, despite COVID, despite everything, you know, we got the Mario 3D World remake. We got Unsighted, which I thought was great. Um, Lost Judgment that Micah came out. Like there, there's a lot of games that came out that that were really entertaining. Uh, I didn't think that Micah and I would have a lot of crossover on this list. Uh, it turns out that not only did we have crossover on three of five games, but they all ended up in the same fucking spots. And leave it, leave it to us old heads. Leave it to us old heads to have this all, all these new, cool games on these new hot consoles coming out. And our fucking game of the year is just an HD remaster. You fucking picked Mass Effect! I mean, look, look, look. I'm, I, I look. I'm basic, I'm right? Done. I'm a basic <laughs> bitch. I'm fine. I'm fine. Look, I will take that label. I will take it, and I will wear that as a badge of honor. If you didn't see this coming from a mile of fucking way, I congratulations! Didn't because congratulations! I saw that better of both of you. Congratulations on this being your first episode of Dense Pixels. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, what else could it be? What else could know. it be? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> look, look. The original Mass Effect. I know Mass Effect Two is the one where everybody jumped on, but the original Mass Effect is is is. I can make arguments about that game being superior <laughs> than some of the than uh, some of the other. Some aspects of one are superior to two and three, and to be able to play that, to be able to play one in a better state that it has ever been to to be able to play it like a fucking game and not uh <laughs> trying to figure shit out and how to how am i supposed to do this like mass effect one this for mass effect one uh uh being upgraded alone is worth it to me right. um look these characters are memorable the the series is um amazing i got four platinums in this thing in a span of four weeks i put in fucking work you're an in insane this game. person and i i i fucking i fucking loved it i guess technically three platinums but four 100 completions in this game i fucking love it i love every aspect of it even like uh, it's just I don't know what I don't know what else to say that we haven't said a bajillion times before on this podcast. Yes, of course it's of course it's fucking Mass Effect. I'm getting ready to replay this goddamn trilogy right now just I to didn't. get four thousand gamer score. <laughs> Uh, uh, playing it on the other system. Of course, I, it's this game. I literally didn't even recognize it as like. <laughs> <laughs> a thing that released because it's a remaster. Nah, yo. No, I it's not. Know. It's not a remaster, Carrie. <laughs> it's one of the best remasters that I've ever seen, and especially <laughs> coming off of, you know, the, all the bugs and 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 nonsense that happened with Andromeda's release, which was a fine game despite the the issues that it had when it came out, and then for us to be graced with with such a fine port, as Micah said, like a modernization of the first Mass Effect game, but not in a way that made it feel not true to what the game, to how the game played normally. Like it, like, like it was great quality of life improvements uh, that still made the game feel like Mass Effect one. So that when you went to two, you're just like, Oh, that's right. I'm playing a real third person shooter now. <laughs> like instead of this piece of shit, but 
No, but like, like I said, it's it is my favorite story in video games. Um, I had it was the first time that I played Mass Effect since the original trilogy uh, first released because I don't replay games usually, and I really don't replay you know hundred hour RPG you know three part epics. Uh, but I did it for this, and I did it within like literally three weeks. Like Micah said, like I literally like crushed through these games. And, and just enjoyed every fucking second of it to the point now where I'm like, maybe I should go back and play Andromeda again. It's been five years at this point since, since I fucking played it. Don't do so, that to yourself. Yeah, it's, it's been, uh, like I said, I, I'm, I'm loath to put a remaster on the list, but it was my favorite game that came out in 2021. And uh, it deserves to be at that number one spot this year for me. Hell yeah. Y'all disgust me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you listeners out there should also go to densepixels.com slash fans and sign up for our Discord and let us know what your top five games were from this past year. Uh, I love reading that stuff because it gives me recommendations for stuff that I might have missed that I should go out and play. So definitely mention that stuff uh, in the Discord. Make sure you subscribe to the channel on YouTube at youtube.com slash densepixels. Uh, follow us on the social medias, uh, use the whatever podcatching app that you use to, to download these things. Uh, go to twitch.tv slash dense pixels, subscribe there, and then follow us all on Twitch as well. Carrie is up, it's Carrie. I'm dense pixels, Brad, Terrence is apparition 410. Um, what a week, what a fucking week <laughs> game of the year done and dusted. Uh, we'll be back with the regular news probably next week. Uh, and we'll fucking see. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and and I'm going to charge you guys uh, to come up with the three games that are coming out in 2022 that are your most anticipated Ooh. or expansions. Because I, obviously I, I would not want to deprive Carrie of putting Sunbreak on there because she's going to put <laughs> tons of hours, mm-hmm. tons of uh-huh. hours on today. See, see, we all laughed at that category at the Game Awards. And now Brad is just like, come on, give me your nominees for <laughs> most anticipated game. That's right. <laughs> Now, I don't think it deserves an award. No. <laughs> Breath of the Wild 2. <laughs> so, that's it for us. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening. We'll see you all the next time. See ya. See ya. Oh, my Lord. Yeah, of course it is. Of course it is. <laughs> I don't like I, I don't know why I expect it. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know what I expected. You're watching the Dense Pixels YouTube channel? Click the subscribe button while you're here and make sure you check out our weekly podcast where we discuss the latest gaming news and our impressions on what games we've been playing.